Okay, great. So yes, thanks everyone for coming. This was uh, presumably going to be our last seminar of this calendar year. Um, we started off very strong and we're ending equally as strong. And uh, we also had a strong middle, of course. So uh, yeah, today we're going to have uh, Ryohei Kobayashi from University of Maryland. And he's uh, agreed to talk to us about higher group symmetry of 3 plus 1 DZ2 gauge theory and non-Clifford logical gates of toric codes. So whenever you're ready, feel free to take it away. Yeah, yeah thanks for introduction and thanks for having me here. Um, so today I'll be talking about the uh, higher group symmetry of the Z2 gauge theory in 3 plus 1 dimensions and the uh, together with the applications to the um, some error correcting codes. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank for my uh, collaborators, uh, who is uh, Mason in UMD, and also uh, Po Shang in UCLA, and also um, Guan Yu uh, in IBM Quantum. He's a quantum information theorist. Um, so most of my talk will be uh, based on the uh, most recent paper that I wrote with uh, Mason and Po Shang, uh, which appeared in November. And also uh, some of the content of my talk will be uh, uh, we have some overlap with the um the content uh for the paper with Guanyu in October. <laughs> so um since I'm from Condensed Matter, like I I like to start my introduction with the some uh, brief intro of the topological order states, which is a uh, uh, gap phases of matter with the uh, ground state degeneracy, where the degeneracy of the ground states depend on the topology of the space. And this uh this degeneracy of the ground state can be um, explained by a standard uh, spontaneous breaking of the zero form symmetry, um, ordinary zero form symmetry, and hence there's no uh, local operator or local order parameter which can distinguish the vacuum. And this um, so topological phases are basically uh, effectively described by a non invertible topological quantum field theory. Uh, for example, um, like there's a Chan Simons theory description for the fractional quantum whole states. And the mostly in my talk, I'll be interested in a three, uh, three plus one dimensions, three plus one space time dimensions, where the uh, basically the, mm. there's excitations, quasi particle or quasi loop excitations, which looks as particle loop, loops. And basically, the excitations are like regarded as some termination of the um, topological. Um, topological operator, uh, topological uh, line or surface operator. So basically, the particles, the quasi particle, uh, um, basically any unlike excitation, which is regarded as a termination of the topological line operator. And also, uh, there are loop of uh, loop like excitations, which are um, basically a boundary of the topological surface operator. And the in 3 plus 1, the, um, it is basically known that the um, it is generally described by the finite case theory in the sense that uh, in here by finite case theory, I mean the like um, start with some uh, invertible topological field theory with zero form symmetry and then uh, gauge the zero form symmetry. And sometimes this invertible TKFT at the starting point can be a uh, spin TKFT, and then we are gauging the fermion parity symmetry to obtain some um, TKFT, um, no invertible TKFT. And so, like, um, uh, in my talk, I want to like sometimes uh, mention the like uh, applications of the topological order states to the um context of the error correcting course or quantum information theory, and the so let me briefly mention uh how um it is relevant to um this kind of a quantum information theory. Um, I I go back to this point later, but here just let me briefly mention it. So. <laughs> So topological order states can be uh, like regarded as a platform of the full truant quantum computation. So when I say this, like uh, I regard the like the ground state of the topological order uh, phase is realized as a ground state of uh, some stabilizer Hamiltonian model or some like uh, lattice model of uh, some quantum codes. And the, then like uh, we can regard the ground state here with the space of the specific uh, stabilizer model as a uh, uh, some uh, logical qubits, which stores the quantum information. So, the, so we we got the ground state Hilbert space as a some like a Hilbert space, a cold space for the qubits, and then um, we can regard the uh, 
global symmetry of the topological order states, the emerging global symmetry of the topological order states as a unitary operation, which uh, basically preserves the uh, ground state Hilbert space, uh, like a preserve the preserves the cold space. So, so this emergent symmetry of the theory can be regarded as uh, some logical gates of the quantum code. So logical gate is uh, some unitary operation acting on the qubits, which is necessary for like uh, performing the explicit quantum computation based on the qubits. So like basically there is a correspondence between the like logical gates of the quantum codes and the emergent symmetry of the theory. And that's why like um, there's a motivation to study the uh, global symmetry of the um, TGFT from the context of the um, quantum information theory and the elaborated codes. Uh, I'll go back to this point later, but so far, like uh, let me just uh, mention the like theoretical point of view about the uh, global symmetry of some uh, Z2G theory. So, <clears throat> so mostly I'm basically interested in the um, Z2G theory, the simplest class of the three plus one dimensional TGFT. Um, in three plus one dimensions. But uh, when I say uh, like the Z2G theory, like it could mean like several things. Um, so like here, I I think I have to clarify the like possible choices of the Z2G theory when like people talk about the Z2G theory in three plus one dimensions. So basically like with or some small footnote uh, that the uh, like we don't consider the cases with the global gravitational anomaly. Um, basically, there are just two choices of the C2 gate theory in three plus one dimensions. Um, so these choices is basically uh, characterized by the uh, choice of the electric uh, stat self statistics of the electric particle. So, so one uh, one of the Z2 gate theory is just a vanilla Z2 gate theory where the electric particle is a bosonic. Um, so basically, just actually, it's just that, like, uh, just a BF theory, like, uh, given by the like pair of the A and B, uh, Z two gauge spheres, and also, um, there's a variant of the Z two gauge theory, um, where the electric particle is fermionic. Uh, yeah. So like, Hank is raising hand. Yeah. Hi. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a just a quick question. Um. The two Z2 gauge theories, so presumably you're talking about like the, um, uh, the the bosonic one and the single other fermionic one that's kind of in like Sheldon's paper, right? Because in Theo's paper, there are two fermionic ones. Um, yeah, two fermionic ones corresponds to like uh, the choice of the uh, like absence or presence of a gravitational anomaly, right? Like uh, you, you can also put the uh, A cup W3, like if you want. So, um, like, uh, yeah. I'm just like, I, I thought that the choice is that the bosonic one is like the bottom one that you have and the fermionic one is the, the usual C2 spin Z2 gauge field or whatever, right. like that one has B squared term in it. Yeah, B squared, yeah, like, uh, yeah, the fermionic statistics can be realized by B squared term. Um, so B squared is uh, basically like a relative as a W2 cup B by the Wolfram error. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the Latin one just means that like a W2 cup B can be just written as a B cup B. Oh, okay. So you're saying that B equals W2, I guess. Uh, but I, here I mean like a DA equals W2, right? Like uh, by solving the equation motion, uh, you get the DA equals W2. Which means okay. that it's a fermionic particle. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, uh, any questions so far about the this right? Okay. Um so yeah, so as Hank asked, like um, so the fermionic statistics of the um uh, like a quasi particle can be realized by adding the some uh, additional topological term, uh, which is W2 cup B. Um, or equivalently, you can also like rewrite this as a B cup B. But anyway, like uh, if you solve the equation motion um, with respect to A, like you get the DA equals to W2. Uh, so basically this A is a uh, works as some trivialization of the like a second stick phonic class, uh, which is W2. So, it basically means that the uh, uh, A 
uh, works as a choice of the spin structure on the space-time manifold, uh, as the like W two is a obstruction to the spin structure. So, like, given that this A is a like uh, like specifying a choice of the spin structure, and this is dynamical, so like this theory is basically um, considered as uh, some D two gauge theory for the dynamical uh, choices of the spin structure, and the <coughs> So, so this is the case. So here, like then A is regarded as a some ferromagnetic particle, and the gives you different choices of the C two gas theory. And interestingly, uh, well, yeah, interestingly, um, each of the um C two gas theory um corresponds to the some decent uh stabilized Hamiltonian model. Uh, so one is uh so just a uh, like a uh, the Upper one is just a Z2 toric code, uh, whereas on Z2 toric code, where the uh, first term for the start term uh, encodes the Gauss law for the Z2 gauge fields. And then the second term encodes the some flatness of the Z2 um, gauge field. Uh, so it is just a, a theory of the flat Z2 gauge field. And then um, we can also consider some variant of the Z2 toric code where the um, particle excitation is a fermionic. Um, this is realized by some like modification of the uh, flux uh, bracket term by some adding an X stabilizer to the um, each some uh, bracket um, term. And the, we can actually explicitly check that uh, for this choice of the stabilizers, uh, actually the um, some extended uh, string operator for the uh, Wilson lines uh, becomes a fermionic statistics. So, um, this is a fermionic uh, Z2 toric course. And the, sorry, um, so each of the uh, Z2 case theory has uh, some uh, <laughs> global symmetries, but uh, the structure of the global symmetry becomes uh, very different uh, depending on the choice of the uh, set of statistics of the particles. So, um, the, just to compare this, um, let me first consider the invertible symmetry of the uh, three plus one dimensional Z2 case theory with the bosonic particle. Um, so obviously, like there is a Z2 two form symmetry and Z2 one form symmetry uh, generated by the electric line operator and magnetic surface operator, respectively. And also, uh, in this theory uh, with the bosonic electric particle, uh, we can consider some like three dimensional. Uh, electric surface operator, electric operator, uh, which is uh, defined by evaluating uh, some uh, action of the uh, two plus one dimensional diagonal fit and theory, two plus one dimensional, um, like bosonic SPT phase on the co dimension one defect. So this defines a Z to zero form symmetry. And the one can actually find that this uh, two form, the one form, and zero form symmetry uh, together gives rise to the non trivial three group symmetry. So here, like there is a Z2 zero form symmetry, like this Z2 just comes from the classification of the two plus one dimensional SPT phase with uh, Z2 uh, global symmetry. And then, um, but uh, you, you can observe that uh, um, in, when the uh, cross particle is fermionic, uh, Z2 gauge theory, emergent symmetry of Z2 gauge theory uh, becomes very uh, rich, like uh, if you just focus on the uh, invertible symmetry. Um, so here, let me uh, list uh, some choices of the <laughs> invertible, uh, let, let me just list the uh, um, global symmetries, invertible global symmetry of the uh, Z2 gauge theory with the emergent fermionic particle. So like, uh, yeah, as usual, we have a Z2 two form symmetry uh, generated by the electric line operator and the Z2, Z2 one form symmetry generated by the magnetic surface operator. And also, as uh, there is a bunch of the um, symmetry defects, uh, invertible symmetry defects generated by the some evaluating uh, invertible spin TQFT uh, on the some uh, some some defect. Um, so why is a Z two one one why uh, is a Z two one form symmetry which is generated by the Kitaev Smirnov chain? Um, so like the so, so definition of this defect is that uh, you just take some uh, surface uh, embedded in the four dimensional space time, and then you evaluate, uh, basically evaluate the alpha invariant 
uh, on the surface. And the, here we assume that the spin structure is induced on the uh, this surface. Um, and then, yeah, if, if this assumption is satisfied, you can just define the alpha invariant uh, on this surface, and it gives rise to some uh, some uh, symmetry defect, invertible symmetry defect of the uh, sleepers one dimensional zero gauge theory. And then uh, we can also define the zero form symmetry um, generated by the uh, two plus one dimensional uh, um, spin invertible theory, uh, which is uh, gravitational transcendent theory. So, um, so this two plus one dimensional invertible phase uh, described by the gravitational transcendent theory is uh, sometimes referred to as a P plus IP superconductor in the context of the uh, condensed matter theory because this P plus IP like, uh, um, can realize uh, this uh, C minus equals to one half uh, um, theory at the weak pairing phase of the P wave pairing of a superconductor. And the so in that case, like um, and we can just define the uh, symmetry defect, co-dimension one symmetry defect in four-dimensional space-time by just evaluating of gravitational transcendent theory uh, on on the defect um, um, where the when the M three is oriented, you can just define this uh, symmetry defect. And the I want to make the point that uh, this uh, gravitational transcendent theory, um, this zero form symmetry, uh, generates a Z eight uh, under the fusion rule, Z eight zero form symmetry under the fusion rule. So I, I think this is a little uh, non trivial point. So uh, I want to um, discuss this Z eight in detail. So maybe maybe could I just ask quickly? Is so. Yeah. Sure. You're basically saying for those last two classes of defects that um, you're basically just defining them by the world volume theory on the defect, like yeah, yeah, basically. So like okay. um, I yeah, see. if you if you put the yeah like a defect is basically like defined on the sum yeah, co dimension p surface, and then you just define mm -hmm. the um defect by um like evaluating the partition function of the theory um. Supported data defect, yeah. Uh, the right. this is I see. In our case, yeah. Right, and then it makes sense that the fusion of defects just becomes stacking of the world volume theories, and there's no problems because everything's topological. I guess that the right. OPEs right. are literally just the fusion. And okay, okay, makes yes, sense. yes, yes. So the fusion of the defect in in our case, fusion of the defect just follows the stacking law of the uh, invertible TTFD. Mm -hmm. The specific yeah. global symmetry. In our case, it's just fermion parity. But uh, well, like it is, yeah, like as I explained later, like this uh, fusion rule of the uh, invertibility gift is a little subtle um, and mm -hmm. right, um, like unexpected result uh, in the case of the zero form symmetry. So, yeah, okay, so, yeah, I, I want to make this point later. Really. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, um, any other questions over? Yeah, real ahead. Just yeah, maybe yeah. a naive one. Um, so I, it's the two Z2 multiple symmetries you have the same one, maybe? Because B equals W2, right? Equation motion. B equals, I mean, no, no, B, B is not equal to W2. Like a DA equals to W2. Uh, yeah, but, but on, on shell of the equation motion. Yeah, yeah. So D equals W2 yeah. is coming from the uh equation motion yeah so okay. what does that tell me about the symmetry charges here sorry what does that what does that mean for the charges here the one form charges here uh charge for which symmetry sorry like uh for what the, forms the one forms yeah for the magnetic symmetry i guess the charged object is just electric uh line operator with some line operator but the well like uh, yeah, it's a little non-trivial to like ask yeah. what is the charged object under this type of chain operator. This is a non-trivial problem. Like, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, this is still a non-trivial defect. I would say, like, uh, the, though there is uh, no like explicit uh charged object of this uh symmetry operator. Like, for example, like um one can see that uh, this uh one form symmetry has a like non-trivial mixture algebraic mixture uh, between the like um 
yeah, there's a non-trivial mixture, algebraic mixture among the Z22 form symmetry and the some magnetic symmetry for the B and the this yeah. operator. So in that sense, like this uh Kitab chain operator still acts non-trivially on the uh, same way. So it is a non-trivial symmetry defect. But uh, there's no charged object actually. Like uh, for, like uh, actually there's no like line operator which is charged by uh this Kitab chain operator. But okay. there's yeah, still non-trivial symmetry action. Okay, yeah. So I was just gonna say that you know some some stuff doesn't split because of this this ARF uh invariant here, but yeah, that makes sense what you said. Thanks. Ah, yeah. oh, sorry, what's the question? No, 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 I'm just saying like another way that I think about it is that like basically um like the the symmetry group or a symmetry three group or two group that you want to construct here for the um, topological phase doesn't split in some sense. And it's sense that it's just, it's, it's not a direct product of stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. So maybe you'll talk about that later, but yeah, what you said makes sense to me now, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, okay. Is there some subtlety with like, defining the orientation or induced orientation and induced spin structure on a surface yeah so like here like i'm basically just saying that the like uh, we are assuming that uh spin structure is induced on the surface but it is not really assumption as you say uh so like in, in order to do that like i basically have to assume that the normal bundle of the sigma is a trivial and like then like we can just kind of decompose the w2 of the like overall uh, four dimensional manifold like into some like w2 of the like uh w2 of the well like basically like i can use some hoytony formula for uh the four dimensional space time nearby the the sigma and the we can actually see that the <clears throat> when the normal bundle is uh, just framed and trivial um basically like w2 of the overall space time manifold is the same as the w2 of the tangent bundle for this uh sigma so in that case the like uh, sigma can be a spin manifold so we can define the alpha invariant for this uh sigma but uh, yeah so when i like write this alpha invariant i'm implicitly assuming uh this kind of uh, induced spin structure um but sometimes i i can also allow the sigma to be a uh, supported on a, a sigma to be a non monitor manifolds. Yeah, in that case, um, I'm assuming that the sigma is a uh, P minus structure. Sig sigma has a P minus structure induced from the bulk. And then we can define the half brown invariant, um, which is valued in the Z8, uh, S root of unity. Um, yeah. And similarly, um, when I write this gravitational chance Simons uh, theory, like I'm assuming that uh, this M3 is, uh, has a spin structure induced from the bulk. Um, this is also a like sort of a non-trivial assumption. Well, like at least I have to like assume that the M3 is uh, oriented and the like normal bundle is just trivial. Then yeah, um, I can do that. Thing. Yes, that's what we should. Hmm. Um, yeah, any other questions so far? Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me proceed to uh explain how to understand this uh structure of the zero form symmetry. So <clears throat> so as Justin mentioned, the fusion rule of the uh, symmetry uh, <laughs> defined by just a variation of the uh, invertible TKFT just follows the stacking rule of the spin but uh, invertible phase. So like here, like since the gravitational chance Simon theory of a P plus a B factor like generates a free classification under the stacking or under the tensor product. So basically, the like the like classification of the spin invertible phase gives you that Z. So like most naively speaking, the zero form symmetry is supposed to be like Z symmetry, like uh, under the fusion. But the uh, like point is that uh, some of them uh, doesn't act faithfully on the Hilbert space. So some of the like Z symmetry generator, some of the like 
defect in the uh, this symmetry doesn't act faithfully on Hilbert space and acts by a trivial or just overall face. And the and the, we are basically interested in a faithful action of the uh, global symmetry on Hilbert space. And the in order to understand the like faithful uh, zero point symmetry. Uh, first thing to notice is that uh, there's a reduction from uh, Z to Z16 um, is happening. Uh, since the, if you take the eight, 16 copies of the, uh, like this gravitational sun Simon theory, uh, P plus P supernova, it defines uh, just a purely bosonic phase, uh, which is uh, E1 level, uh, E8 level one uh, sun theory, like a bosonic E8 phase. So if you take the like 16 copies of the, uh, symmetry defects, um, it is purely bosonic. So it doesn't like, interact with the dynamical spin structure of the Z2 gauge theory. So this uh, 16 times Z uh, element um, doesn't like, quite interact with the uh, like, theory, Z2 gauge theory, and acts by a trivial operator on the Hilbert space. So like, there's a fast thing to notice um, that, that there is a reduction from a Z to Z16. And also, uh, more non trivially, uh, there is a faster reduction from the Z16 to Z8. So, so, so this is a more non trivial point that uh, like, well, well, like I, um, the way to explain this is that uh, if you take eight copies of the like gravitational Sun Simon theories, it doesn't depend on the spin structure. The partition function doesn't depend on the spin structure. But uh, meanwhile, it needs a spin structure to, to be defined. So it is still a uh, like spin theory, like, uh, since it requires a spin structure to be defined. But uh, um, the partition function doesn't depend on the spin structure. So it still um, acts by a trivial operator on the Hilbert space of the uh, Z2 gauge theory for the dynamical spin structure. So um, one indirect way to see this uh, Z8 reduction is um to consider the, like in addition to the just the pure gravitational transcendent theory you take a, another copy of the like invertible phase which is inverse of the gravitational transcendent theory so like gravitational transcendent is p plus ip and then its inverse is uh, like now um, um denoted as a p minus ip so um suppose that we consider these two copies so obviously like these two like this, like copy theory, like p plus ip times p minus ip is a trivial invertible phase as a like a, just a purely spin invertible phase with no other symmetries. But uh, we can regard this as a non trivial uh, spin invertible TKFT if we con additionally consider the Z2 global symmetry, uh, where the Z2 symmetry is regarded as a fermion parity symmetry acting on a single layer of the p plus ip superconductor. Uh, so, like once you um, regard this as a like a spin module phase with a Z2 symmetry, um, this SPT phase is classified by a basically Z8. And um, the so it means that the, if you take the eight copies of the P plus IP times P minus IP, um, this doesn't depend on the um, like choice of the Z2 background gauge field for the this Z2 symmetry. And this, uh, since I define the like Z2 symmetry as uh, some like um, fermion parity for the P plus IP superconductor, um, the, the meaning for the Z2 background gauge field is basically a, a difference in the spin structure of the two layers um, between the P plus IP and P minus IP. So we can basically like choose a different uh, spin structure for each layer. And the like, difference is characterized by a like a Z2 gauge field. And the, this Z2 background gauge field is just encoded the difference between these two spin structures. And if you take eight copies of these uh, phases, the like shifting the spin structure for the single layer doesn't affect on the partition function. So this implies that the, like, if you just take the single layer and take eight copies, it doesn't depend on the spin structure for the layer. So this is one indirect way to see the Z8 reduction of the, um, um, the global symmetry, but there is uh, also, of course, uh, like more direct way to study uh, the spin structure dependence for the eight copies of the P plus IP. 
and see the see how the like eight copies of the P plus a B doesn't depend on the spin structure, choice of the spin structure. So uh, in order to do this, like I think it's convenient to start with the like uh, now two copies of P plus a B, which uh, are also description by a uh, Yuan Chan Simon theory. Um, <laughs> so which is basically uh, allows this kind of um, description okay, in, in terms of the just a U and gauge with U. Um, the and this A is a uh, um some choice of the spin structure uh, satisfying D equals to W two. And we are here implicitly taking the lift to integral uh, gauge field. Um, and so and by starting with this kind of the U and Chan Simons action, like we can rewrite the uh this action by uh by some rewriting um define redefining the sign dynamical uh U and gauge field U prime. Uh, which is actually spin gauge field. But then like after rewriting, we can kind of uh, like um, extract the spin structure dependence by a second term, which is uh, like pi over four ADA. So like this essentially encodes the uh, spin structure dependence for the two copies of the uh, two copies for um, the P plus IP superconductors. So in order to understand the eight copies of the P plus IP superconductors, you just um, basically multiply by four and you get the uh, like pi times ADA. So this is a spin structure dependence for eight copies basically. So, and it's easy to see that uh, like it, it's not affected by shifting the spin structure by a zeta gauge field. So that's another way to see uh, how to understand the um, CLZ8 reduction of the uh, global symmetry. So yeah, so so what now now we see that uh, there is a Z8 zero form symmetry which is traceable. And the but there is some uh, puzzle um to understand the like symmetry structure of the theory. Like uh, the puzzle uh happens when we try to consider the uh tooth anomaly of the Z2 gauge theory. So so since the like symmetry defect carries a uh framing anomaly. So like, uh, since the gravitational chan Simon theory carries some uh, framing anomaly, um, it means that if you like move the like defect topologically, uh, like the partition function is of like uh, is not invariant, um, and it changes by some like gravitational background of the space time, and it means that uh, it's like this fact is reflected to the some mixed. Uh, gravitational anomaly uh, between the zero form symmetry and the gravity. So basically this zero form symmetry has a mixed gravitational anomaly uh, characterized by uh, this uh, zero form uh, symmetry background gauge field and some like uh, signature or like contrary number uh, which is gravity. And the, so one puzzle like, a, so now uh, since I said that the zero form symmetry is Z8, I want to take this C1 to be a, some background gauge field for the Z8 symmetry. But obviously one puzzle is that uh, like if you if you want to declare that this is a Z8 gauge field, uh, this is not a very defined uh, this like response action in 4 plus 1D is for the fifth anomaly is not very defined action of the Z8 gauge field. Uh, since this action is not invariant under the shift of the uh, background gauge field by some eight times something. So meanwhile, it makes sense when like this C1 or um, the, the 16 gauge field uh, instead. So there's one puzzle like when we try to understand the uh, mixed gravitational anomaly of the theory. And the solution uh, for this is to turn on the background gauge field for the two form symmetry as well. And the then like um yeah then the like, due to the um ferromagnetic statistics of the electric particle um this two form symmetry generated by the electric particle has some a uh, framing anomaly some toothed anomaly uh which is originates from the framing anomaly of the Wilson line operator uh which is given like this uh c3 cup w2 and then um 
there's a way to like keep this uh, whole action invariant under the transformation of the uh, zero form symmetry C1 by eight times integer. Um, and so to do this, basically, like if you like shift the C1 by eight times integer, we can also shift the like two form gauge field, uh, background gauge field for the two form symmetry by uh, um, this something cup W2. Um, so this is possible um, because uh, this uh, Pontryagin number uh, is converted to the like W2 square uh, module two. So like if you plug in the like eight times lambda one here, then um, the modif like the gauge transformation give rise to the lambda W two W two, and it can be absorbed to yeah in the yeah second time. Okay, yeah, I I see the lion is uh, raising hand. Hey, um, I so does the one form part corresponding to the ARF invariant also enter here? Um, well, like, uh, oh, that's a good question, but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, this is a, yeah, at least this is a signature with the Strigler symmetry, but, uh, like, here, like, yeah, like, here in this argument, like, it's kind of unclear, like, why, like, it has to be absorbed by a, like, background for the two-form symmetry instead of the, uh, one-form symmetry, but, uh, yeah, we can see it later, I think. But the uh, yeah, but the uh, this is a signature of the Strigler symmetry, but the uh, um yeah, so yeah. So later we will see the one form part. Yeah, yeah, or... yeah. Later on, like uh, okay. we can see the explicit uh explicit formula for the Strigler symmetry involving the Kitaevich defect. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the question. So here, like, um, <laughs> so at least we can see that, uh, so this anomaly of this Z8 symmetry becomes very defined. Uh, we see non-trivial mixture with the other symmetry. And the, this is a symptom of the uh, higher group symmetry. Like here, like it is actually a three group symmetry. So, right. So like, yeah, here the point is that the like the fifth anomaly can be very defined like uh, uh, once you um, uh, consider like mixture not really mixture with uh, other uh, symmetry defects. So yeah, let me try to see the like whole structure of the zero form and one form two form symmetry. Um, like after seeing that, that there must be some like a non-trivial uh, mixture of the symmetry. So of uh, like in order to like study the whole algebraic structure of the symmetry, the first thing to notice is that the um the zero form symmetry uh, generated by the gravitational chance Simons induces a non-trivial permutation of the one form symmetry generators. So um it induces the automorphism of the uh one form symmetry generators. So um so this zero form symmetry acts by the acts on the magnetic surface operator by uh, attaching the um Kitaev chain surface operator on it. So so this induces a non-trivial uh, permutation action on the one form symmetry, like acting on acting non-trivial on the magnetic surface operator. Um this non-trivial automorphism was actually like pointed out uh, first by Theo Johnson Fried paper. And also later, uh, there's also some more, phys more physics paper by uh, mention and the uh, his student thinking. Um, so, so this is um this can be understood by uh the fact that uh, like if you consider the intersection between the zero form symmetry defects and the magnetic flux, there is a um minor zero mode uh bound at the in intersection point. Uh, which is regarded as a, a non-invertible non sigma particle of the Ising PKFT. So this minor zero mode can be regarded as a, some termination of the Kitaev chain defect. Um, the that's um, one way to like see the like non-trivial permutation action uh, from the magnetic defect to the magnetic defect times uh, Kitaev chain. 
This can be also seen from the more formal argument uh, based on the compactifying the uh, Myron of fermion. So um, to do this, we just describe the like P plus IP superconductor by a uh, single Myron of fermion with a negative mass in two plus one D. And then like um, we consider the compactifying uh, this two plus one dimensional Myron of fermion with a periodic spin structure uh, in the compactifying direction. So this periodic spin structure uh, encodes the uh, like insertion of the magnetic flux uh, around the cylinder. And then um, because of this periodic spin structure, we can take the like fermion field around the compactifying direction to be some like constant uh, fermion field. And then after all, we can we just end up with obtaining the one plus one dimensional minor fermion with a negative mass, which is a Kitax minor chain. So so this argument basically like um yeah manifests that uh, like if you act the zero form symmetry on the magnetic flux by enclosing the magnetic flux by a zero form symmetry, you just get the uh, action by attaching the one form symmetry generator. And the and this um permutation action uh, implies that the whole symmetry structure among the like invertible p form symmetry becomes a non-invertible after all, uh, because it because because of just the fact that uh, this uh, intersection between the magnetic flux and p plus p defect uh, bounds a non-invertible anion um, anion uh, Lewis online, uh, which is a sigma particle by using TQFT, and the then the like yeah so the intersection between the magnetic surface and p plus p defect just uh, bounds a uh, non-invertible line type object. And due to the like, non-invertible fusion rule of rising TKFT, um, the whole structure of the global symmetry becomes non-invertible. And one of the manifestations is just that uh, like, if you just consider the magnetic pair of the magnetic fluxes passing through the like, P plus IP domain wall and then fuse them, you obtain some non-invertible fusion rule. Um, the, so this kind of like non-invertible version of the like yeah, associator, like uh, if you take the associator of the magnetic fluxes in the presence of the domain wall, you get the um, one plus psi like, due to the uh, non-invertible fusion rule rising. So the whole structure of the global symmetry is non-invertible. Uh, even if you started with uh, like like combination of the invertible P-form symmetries. Uh, There's some chat. Oh, okay, okay, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so the whole structure is non-invertible. But the if you restrict myself to the uh Z4 subgroup the zero form symmetry, so which means that the uh, um so like odd element of the Z8 uh, symmetry permits the uh generator of the one form symmetry and it leads to the non-invertible symmetry. But if you restrict myself to the Z4 subgroup the zero form symmetry, uh you get the uh some uh higher group structure among the uh higher group structure among the invertible symmetries uh which is a three group so so here i just want to introduce uh, um how the three group looks like um in our theory so if you just consider that z4 uh, zero form symmetry um together with the all of the uh, one form and two form symmetry um generated by the magnetic surface and the Kitaev chain and the electric Wilson lines. Um we can actually find the um three group structure uh, characterized by the uh, post of class uh, which is degree for cohomology. Um so the yeah like here like instead of the like explicitly deriving the three group equations I um, just want to show the result here. So the right hand side for this equation um, denotes the H4 obstruction class, uh, Postonikov class for the uh, three group equations. And the and the right hand left hand side is uh, um, the the like, co boundary for the background gauge field of the uh, two form symmetry uh, electric line operator. So this equation basically means that so electric line operator is sourced from uh, some intersection of the defects 
of the cell phone on the one phone signal trees. And so it basically consists of two parts. Um, the H4 class consists of two parts. So the first part uh, shaded by the blue um, blue region is that the uh, um, you know some inter you know some like uh, three group uh, three group structure um, uh, that involves the uh, kitaev chain one home symmetry defects. And the, this is not actually new. Um, this has been discussed in literature like. Um, uh, for example, in Lyons paper in 2017 uh, with Anton. And also like it has been heavily discussed in the context of the uh, classification of the free menu invadible phase with zero phone symmetry. And the, yeah, for example, like this P2 cap C2 means that uh, if you consider the intersection between the uh, Kitaev chain operator and the magnetic surface operator, uh, this intersection bounds a fermion parity of state. So it sources an electric particle um, that's how the this kind of non-trivial three group appears. And also, um, the second term is kind of new um, and involves a, a zero form symmetry, a Z8 zero form symmetry. Well, like a Z4 subgroup of Z8 zero form symmetry. And the here, the C1 is a background gauge field for the Z4 subgroup uh, zero form symmetry. And it also has a sound like subtle uh, three group uh, symmetry structure. Uh, which involves a zero form symmetry on the uh, magnetic surface operator B2. And let me like try to explain the like physical consequence for okay. Uh yeah, Ryan is asking some question. Yeah, sorry, is uh, C2 still um closed? Uh C2 is closed. C2 is closed. Let me see. I guess that was what I was wondering earlier. It's like the C2 somehow enters in the three group structure non trivially. Uh, well, I mean, well, here, here, but I mean, like. It well, doesn't get sourced by C1. Uh, let's see, like, well, like uh, here I'm, yeah, C2 is closed because I'm just restricting myself to the, like uh, a Z4 subgroup of the zero form symmetry. Uh, and in that case, like uh, there's no permutation induced by the zero form symmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I can just um, consider the setup where the like, C2 is not sourced from the any other mm -hmm. intersection. So we can just take, to, to be crossed. So when um, you take the yeah. whole structure with the non-invertible symmetry, is there like a simple way to encode this? Uh... Oh, yeah, that's a hard question. I haven't been able to like uh, um, control, yeah, describe it in a control way so far. Like uh, this is a, yeah, no invertible version of this. Like, yeah, this is some no invertible symmetry which encodes right. this uh, three group structure. But uh, like, yeah, so far, like I haven't talked about the, uh, uh, no invertible symmetry, like full structure of no invertible symmetry. Yeah. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So, yeah. So, this is a, a sleeve structure. So, uh, any questions so far? Okay. So, let me just mention the like, physical meaning of this uh, three group structure involving the zero form symmetry. Um, so, <clears throat> So yeah, let me comment on the physical interpretation. So this now three group structure involving the zero form symmetry, um, yeah, basically consists of the two parts. Uh, so the first term is um, some like interplay between the magnetic defects and the like zero form symmetry defects. So so this can be like physically understood as a uh, like so this DB two over two. Uh, basically represents a junction of the magnetic symmetry defects. So, um, so this uh, first term can be understood as uh, some effect that the electric charge is sourced uh, by um, crossing the when the when the junction of the magnetic fluxes crosses through the uh, zero form symmetry defects. And the so this can be understood from the like for example like let's consider the, like. Like setup where the like we have a pair of the magnetic fluxes on the uh, the co-dimensional defects of the zero form symmetry uh, for the subgroup Z4 symmetry carrying carrying the C minus equals to one. And then like this subgroup Z4 symmetry is uh, considered as uh, some abelian transform theory, uh, E1 level four under the 16 fold way. 
And this uh, ion level for transcendence theory follows a Z4 fusion rule, where the pair, if you like uh, fuse the pair of the magnetic defects, it produces a fem fermionic electric particle. So like because of this fusion rule, like if you uh, cross the like junction uh, of the magnetic defects through the co-dimensional defect, you end up with uh, some like uh, nucleation of the electric charge. So which is regarded as a uh, like generator of the two-form symmetry in the back. So that's how uh, one can understand the um, manifestation of the three group symmetry from the explicit process. And the second term is uh, much more subtle actually. Like um, so, this three group symmetry is uh, actually like some term which is introduced to like make the gravitational uh, like mixed gravitational anomaly very defined. Uh, in the previous slide. So like there, like we observed that uh, if you like shift the electric uh, two-form symmetry, like background gauge field for the electric symmetry by some eight times something, like, uh, well, sorry, like if you shift the background gauge field for the zero-form symmetry by eight times something, um, you have you also have to shift the like background gauge field for the electric uh, two-form symmetry. And the so this three group equation, this three group nature can be uh, understood from this uh, term. And this um so second term basically saying that uh, like um we have to yeah if you consider some jump like some junction of the uh, zero form symmetry defects which fuses into the trivial symmetry defect carrying the uh like like eight copies of p plus ip. Um, if you like cross the magnetic flux with the junction of the zero form symmetries, there is a nucleation of the electric charge. Um, so this is a, a another um, effect of the three group symmetry uh, for this um, z 2 gas theory with the emergent fermions after we take the uh, zero form symmetry to be a faithful z symmetry. So yeah, so that's basically all about the uh the field theoretical aspect of, of this work. And the yeah, now I want to like move my perspective a little bit and go to the maybe quantum information uh, perspective and the relation to the uh logical gates of the reporting course. So um any questions so far? Okay, so let me let me just go to the um, some more quantum information perspective of the um, <laughs> this two case theory and its global symmetry. So, uh, yeah, as I like briefly mentioned in the introduction, the like, topological order states is a uh, like basically a platform of the for for for, for tolerant quantum computation, where we regard the like ground state Hilbert space uh, of the some Hamiltonian model as a cold space which like encodes the logical qubits. And then, um, like, then the like people are basically interested in uh, some operation called the logical gates of the quantum code, which is just a unitary operation uh, preserving the grand state subspace of the uh, topological order phase, um, which is just a uh, like a unitary preserving the unitary just acting on the, the qubits uh, stored by the quantum error operating course, and. This is just a uh, imagined symmetry of the theory. So, for example, um, if you just consider the Z two torical um, in two two plus one dimensions, um, this is a Z two gauge theory in two plus one dimensions and has a Z two imagined symmetry exchanging the like electric and magnetic particle. And corresponding to uh, this C2 symmetry, there is actually some uh, unitary circuit which can encode the like, EM exchange symmetry. And this uh, unitary um, like works as a like, logical guess of the Z2 Tory code. Um, the, this, so in that sense, this uh, emergent Z2 symmetry of the Z2 guess theory gives rise to the some non trivial logical guess of the uh, Z2 Tory code. Um, and it is basically some Hadamard gate logical gates. Like Hadamard is uh, some like a uh, uh, unitary acting on a single qubit, uh, exchanging the power Z and power X. 
Uh, technically, it's a little more involved uh, operations, but uh, here the point is that uh, like if you have a uh, emergent symmetry, it typically gives rise to some uh, some unitary operation on the quantum error correcting course and give rise to some uh, logical gates of the quantum error correcting course. And particularly, uh, like interesting, like important class of the logical gates is a uh, uh, for tolerant logical gates, uh, which just means that uh, like if you have an error in the system, like uh, this error only propagates locally by the action of the logical gates. And the, the this kind of a for tolerant logical gates is realized by a local constant of circuit, uh, which just means uh, like the symmetry is generated by the some sequence of the local unitary operations. Uh, like so each unitary is just uh, defined locally and some um, by the sequence of the this local unitary uh, along the constant depth circuit, uh, the symmetry is defined. And in this setup, the basically the error just propagates along the some shallow right cone of the constant depth, local constant depth circuit. So the propagation of the error by the action of the unitary is local. So this is preferable in the context of the uh, quantum error correction. So, so people are basically interested in some symmetry implemented by a local constant of circuit. And there is a uh, tight constraint uh, in the context of the quantum information theory by Bravi Kenich that uh, uh, if you consider the local constant of circuit in two dimension, uh, two dimensional space, it can uh, only implement the uh, uh, logical Clifford gates, uh, some restricted class of the unitary operations on the qubits, which is called the Clifford gates. Uh, Clifford means that the sum is unitary, which uh, brings the power, um, which brings the power to power. So if you conjugate any power operators by a Clifford unitary, it again becomes some element of the power. So, um, yeah, so. Basically, for the local stabilizer code in two two dimensions, uh, there's this kind of tight constraint uh, about the like, unitaries uh, implemented by the uh, constant of circuit in two dimensions. But the meanwhile, it is also known that the um, query for the gates alone cannot do the universal quantum computation, uh, which is uh, basically a basically by a go to small neo. So actually, we really need us like we really need us some non Clifford gate, which is outside of the uh, Clifford gate, to realize uh, like some quantum operation, some quantum uh, computation, like um, universal quantum computation. And the in, so for this purpose, you need to circumvent this uh, Bravi Kenich bound in two dimensions. So like there's a need to go to three space dimensions. And the so actually like it is known that if you can realize that like all of the Clifford gates uh, plus a single non Clifford gates, then you can do the universal quantum computation. And so like there's a some uh, motivation to study uh the three three plus one dimensional uh TKFT. Um, a symmetry of a three plus one dimensional TKFT in order to realize uh, um, uh, some four turns non Clifford gates. And so there's a motivation to study the yeah, zero form symmetry of the um, yeah, uh, yeah, three plus one dimensional TKFT. So, yeah, so. Um, so one example for the non Clifford gates in for the three plus one dimensional TKFT is a uh, CCZ gate, uh, control control Z gate in the Z2 cube toric code, Z2 cube gate theory. Uh, in this Z2 cube gate theory in three plus one D, um, we can define the invertible zero form symmetry uh, generated by a type three cycle cycle um, in three plus one dimensional uh, Z2 cube gate theory and the the application of this asymmetry defect in the context of the to the non Clifford gates uh, is firstly discussed by uh, Benny Yoshida in 2016 or something. And the the 
my result for the uh, in the context of this error correcting course is just uh, um we can we can define we can uh, obtain the various non cryptological gates of the three plus one dimensional z two gate theory single copy of z two gate theory with Fermionic particle by uh, the zero form symmetry uh, generated by the c eight uh, zero form symmetry generated by the p plus a big superconductor which generates a z eight group and the fusion. So let me um yeah briefly explain the um how to uh, how this uh, non cryptological gate looks like. Um, so yeah, in order to do this, maybe let's consider the, um, let's just consider the, um, kilobit space of the Z2 gate theory on a generic oriented three manifold, uh, where the, um, so this is just a Hilbert space of a Z2 gate theory and the zero, um, the dimension of the Hilbert space, just as many as the uh, choices of the dynamical gauge field, flat dynamical gauge field on the oriented manifolds. So let's say um, we have n logical qubits corresponding to the choice of the uh, gauge fields. And then like uh, as there are uh, power operators, uh, which corresponds to the power logical operators, which corresponds to the uh, generators of the uh, one form symmetry and two form symmetry. So, um, so there is an extended topological operator uh, generating a two form, uh, uh, generating one form uh, due to symmetry, which is just a magnetic surface operator supported at uh, some uh, <coughs> some surface, uh, some cross to surface. And the, each of the uh, magnetic surface operator on the surface generates some uh, non trivial operator. Um, uh, acting on the Hilbert space and identified as the power X on the space of the n qubits. And also there is uh, some power Z operator called which corresponds to the electric line operator. So basically we can regard each the qubit is corresponding to some like choice of the surface sigma. Um, and then uh, we can kind of uh, derive the formula for the logical gates implemented by the Kitaev chain one form symmetry and the P plus IP zero form symmetry. So yeah, basically we can derive the, like for example, this uh, Kitaev chain operator on the generic surface, uh, which can be non-monetable, um, gives you some like Clifford unitary, uh, which is a uh, product of the CC and S. Uh, S is a, so C is a control Z and S is a, some uh, unitary acting on a single qubit, which is a diagonal matrix of the one and I. And also uh, more interestingly, the zero form symmetry generated by the uh, P plus IP superconductor uh, gives you some like very non clifford unitary, uh, which is a product of the control control Z and the control S and some so-called T. So T is a, uh, unitary on the acting on a single qubit, uh, which is a diagonal matrix of the some one and s root of unity. Um, so it can implement the uh, like various uh, three kinds of the uh, non clifford logical gates. So this is a uh, um, some main result for the um, in the context of the airplane course. Yeah. So Ryan's yeah. Is the non cliffordness related to the fact that it's non invertible? Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, yeah, for example, like, yeah, this is deeply related to the permutation action on the one form symmetries. So basically the permutation action uh, leads to some like commutation relation between the zero form symmetry and the one form symmetry. And the, so this basically says that some like U, some zero form symmetry U and commutation relation commutator between this U zero form symmetry and the power operator becomes some certain Clifford gate, which is a Kitaev chain. Mm -hmm. So it implies that the U is a non Clifford. Um, okay. So in that sense, yeah, since this non trivial automorphism on the one form symmetry like, give rise to the non invertible symmetry. So in that sense, it is related to the non invertible nature of the symmetry. It seems also related to Bravi's theorem, right? Uh, that like, if it's a circuit, then it's going to be Clifford. Although here you would want to say like, if it's QCA, then it's Clifford or something. 
Uh, yeah, like, uh, like in order to like uh, have a non clifford like by the Bravi Konish, like uh, you need to have a like, three dimensional operator to implement it. So like this is mm -hmm. this is uh, such a uh, yeah Bravi Konish bound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is like so called sound like there's a general bound by Gravikonish called so called uh, the Clifford hierarchy. Uh, the this non Clifford gate lives in the sound third, yeah, third uh, level of the Clifford hierarchy, which is non Clifford gate. Yeah, I see. Cool, thanks. Thanks, thanks for the question. So, by the way, like uh, I think, yeah, I already access the uh, one hour, okay, is that okay? Uh, or okay, should I wrap up? If you have stuff you want to finish off, feel free. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm happy to keep listening. This is great, yeah. so go ahead. Yeah. yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, maybe I, I can finish soon, but okay, like, let me keep uh, discussions. Okay, so, so yeah, these formulas are basically the main results uh, for the expression of the logical gates. And the so let me uh try to explain how how to understand this uh expression of the logical gates uh for the Kitaf chain and the uh deeper service superconductors. So first of all, uh, okay, let me try to discuss the Kitaf chain operator. Um the so here, so here, like uh, so first of all, like we have uh we observe that the uh, this Kitachian operator realizes uh, some control Z uh, gate. Uh, this control Z gate uh, originates from the alpha invariant on the origin surface. So, so this can be understood as follows. So suppose that this uh, surface uh, sigma J that supports the Kitaf chain is uh, on the torus. And then, um, Basically, like this alpha invariant keeps you the sound phase uh, depending on the spin structure uh, around the uh, each cycle of the torus. And the if you have a like anti like if you have a one of the spin structure to be uh, anti periodic, you just get the trivial uh, sign. But uh, if you have a periodic periodic spin structure, you get a minus sign. So this is the definition of the alpha invariant. And the, in our setup of the Z2K theory, basically we have a, uh, some dynamical spin structure on the space time. And so like basically we can regard this anti-periodic or periodic spin structure as uh, some choice of the holonomy in the Z2K field, uh, which is uh, this holonomy is just uh, some eigenvalue of the Wilson line operator. And in our case, this is eigenvalue of the power Z operator because I identified as a uh, I identify the Wilson line as a power Z operator of the uh, Z2K theory. So, so yeah, so like in, if you just express the uh, like spin structure as sound like the eigenvalue of the power Z for two logical qubits, like alpha invariance just emits a minus one phase to the uh, like um, Z equals to minus one for like two, Logical qubits. So this is nothing but the definition of the control Z operator, like in the basis of the Z eigenvalue. So basically, in this setup where the uh, surface is supported at the torus, uh, this Kitaf chain operator gives rise to the alpha invariant, uh, gives rise to the sorry, like a control Z operator uh, on the qubits. And the a little more sophisticated uh, setup is uh, like uh, when this sigma is supported at the uh, um, non oriental manifolds. In that case, um, this Kitaf chain operator uh, evaluates uh, some non oriental version of the alpha invariant, which is the alpha brown cover invariant. Uh, uh, the, so, this is, uh, this is actually a S root of unity, and the, this S root unity kind of enriches uh, like some logical gates, action of the logical gates. Um, implemented by the Kitaf chain. And the this um half brown invariant um, basically give rise to the this S gate uh like like some like diagonal matrix on one and uh, some force root of unity. Um so this uh, rather term for the S gate originates from the 
um, case where the Kitaev chain operator is supported at a non-orientable manifold. And the you only get a fourth root of unity, not eighth. Uh, yeah, it is S. Well, it is S root unity, but uh, like uh, so can you see the last in the last sum we we are mm -hmm. factorizing the overall uh, S root unity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is like a, this last sum like basically corresponds to the case where the Kitaev chain operator is supported at the like RP two manifold. Um, mm -hmm. in that case, like uh, the logical gates just corresponds to some diagonal matrix of the mm -hmm. like S root unity and it's like conjugate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we can basically factorize um the mm. S root unity. Um, so this yeah, is why you don't get any interesting like T gate structure. Yes, exactly. So yeah, this corresponds to the fact that like, if you take four copies of the like uh, time reversal invariant Kitaev chain, you just get a bosonic phase. Um, uh -huh. so, yeah, so it doesn't interact with the uh, T2K theory. I see, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, and the, um, so these caption operators are actually like expressed by a um, local constant depth circuit, and it is actually for a torrent. Um, so there's a sound like some weird uh, constant depth unitary circuit if you can implement this uh, Kitaev-chain logical gates. So it can be, for example, defined on the uh, toric curve where the uh, qubits are living on vertices. And then like uh, we can consider some like sequence of the three constant depth, three unitary circuits to uh, implement this uh, Kitaev chain operator. So yeah, this yeah this is a constant depth uh, unitary circuit. And also um, this circuit actually turns out to work even in the presence of the cross cap, like uh, like implementing the non-orientable uh, non-orientable non topology. So uh, in our case, this, in that case, like uh, we can, um, yeah, we can implement uh, this S type gate by a constant depth unitary, a local constant depth unitary. Um, the, so like basically all of the like CZ and S gate can be realized by some like local constant depth circuit on the some rad like Tori code. So these are actually corresponds for Torrent logical gates. And the, so then let me kind of move to the uh, discussion of the uh, zero form symmetry, C8 zero form symmetry. So this induces a, uh, um, so like this uh, zero form symmetry has the expression of the combination of the non clifford logical gates. And the this non clifford nature is like, as I asked uh, previously, like uh, this can be understood from the automorphism uh, of the zero form symmetry acting on the one form symmetry, automorphism of the one form symmetry acted by the, induced by a zero form symmetry. So, so this uh, automorphism manifests itself uh, as a combinational relation between the uh, zero form symmetry generator and the one form symmetry generator. So explicitly, okay, if you take the commutator between the uh, zero form symmetry and the magnetic surface operator, like uh, we can explicitly check that uh, um, this unitary satisfies this relation, like uh, where the we can explicitly understand at the operator level that the uh, like magnetic surface is um, permitted to the magnetic surface times the uh, Kitaev chain one form symmetry operator. So it sort of like this non clifford nature sort of comes from the like permutation action of the uh, one like uh, on the one form symmetry uh, induced by a zero form symmetry. The other way to understand the um, non clifford nature of the logical gate is um, from the higher group structure of the subgroup uh, Z4 symmetry. Um, so like, um, as we mentioned earlier, so there's uh, some non-trivial three group symmetry involving the uh, two form and one form and zero form symmetry. And this uh, non-trivial algebraic mixture like manifests itself as a non-trivial computational relation between the magnetic surface and the like uh, two copies of the uh, P plus IP defects since here we considering the two copies of the P plus IP as a generator of the Z4. So, and the, 
And so this slick equation basically means that uh, if you um, act as like zero form symmetry on the junction of the one form symmetry, the electric particle gets attached. So this effect is kind of um, translated into into the commutation relation between uh, zero form symmetry on the magnetic surface, and where we consider the magnetic surface is a non-orientable manifold. And here, by considering the non-orientable manifold, uh, we can like realize a setup where the this uh, this box time homomorphism is non-trivial, where we can understand the orientation reversing defects of the magnetic surface as some junction, non trivial junction. Um, then like this strict equation kind of um, give rise to the non trivial commutation relation between the zero form and the one form symmetries. And then like this commutation relation implies that uh, this U square give rise to the some uh, non trivial Clifford gates, like uh, concretely CCOS. So this U must be some a square root of the C zero S, which is a uh, some non Clifford uh, control S or T. So that's another way of understanding this uh, non Clifford nature. So and the at the last part of my talk, like let me um mention how to like microscopically realize this um zero form symmetry generator um uh, in the in the toric code. So. So it's an explicit way to like implement this uh, P plus IP, um, P plus IP eight Z eight symmetry by um, considering some layout system of the like atomic insurters, and then like we can kind of um, define some uh, unitary uh, which nucleates a pair of uh, P minus IP times P plus IP on the on the two layers acting on the two layers of the atomic insurters, and. Um, by using this kind of the unitary acting on two layers, okay, we can first consider the nucleation of the P plus IP times P minus IP for the even odd pair, each even odd pair of the layout system. And then um, we can then annihilate uh, P minus IP times P minus IP pair for the each odd even layers. So by like this combination of the unitaries, we can actually define the um, uh, some operator which realizes this non clifford logical gates after some bosonization. Um, so this idea is not actually from uh, like fit, uh, ours originally, like uh, it's originally from the recent Fitokoski and Hastings paper, um, where they constructed some uh, this unitary on the three torus of the layout system. And this can give rise to some exact symmetry of the three plus one dimension Z toric code on the torus where we can define the control control Z gate. And this unitary is a, is some finite time evolution by a local Hamiltonian albeit with the exponentially decaying tails. So, so this U is thought to like not propagate the error non-locally, so the full trans is expected. So this statement is not super rigorous yet. And the, we can also generalize the construction of the um, this microscopic uh, unitary on the different set of, of the manifolds. For example, we can also uh, define the this operator on the twisted version of the three torus, mapping torus, uh, where the the where the mapping torus is defined on the some like modular modular S square or some transformation on the uh, on the two torus. This is basically just acts by some like pi rotation of the torus. So this is basically just a uh, like twisted boundary condition in the z direction by the some C2 rotation. So in this setup, um, there's a non-trivial contribution from the second factor, second term in the expression of the logical gates. And, the, and then we can realize some like control S gate by the um by this uh, p plus ip symmetry and also um lastly like we can also consider the um <laughs> even more um intricate topology um, by considering the so-called partial rotation so um, so this is basically a some twisted some boundary condition which identifies a uh, some fast and final layer by uh, some like 
rotation, C2 rotation that acts partially on the disk of the system. And the, this identification can uh, essentially make the space uh, look like a RP3 like. And then we can define the uh, this uh, unitary operator in the presence of the, this partial rotation cross gap. And then this unitary turns out to act by uh, some uh, logical T gates um, up to some like amplitude after projecting onto the uh, logical qubits uh, run set over the uh, Z-Tory course. So, so like um, our formula kind of um, suggests the possibility to define the some like logical T gates um, by sweeping the uh, P plus RP superconductor in the presence of the, this RP3 topology. So yeah, so that's basically all. So let me summarize my talk here. So like we have seen that the uh, like P plus RP symmetry generates a Z symmetry of the Z2 gas theory in 3 plus 1D and the, it forms a higher group structure or non invertible symmetry structure. And the and the it has some application to the uh, some logical gates of error correcting course. Uh, where the we can identify the like Z8 emergent symmetry as a, a logical gate of the con like toric codes. And then um, if you consider P plus IP symmetry in the context of the Z2 gauge theory in 3 plus 1D, it can give rise to the uh, various uh, kinds of the non grateful logical gates. Um, the, let me just uh, list the future work here. Yeah, thanks for the attention. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for yeah. talk. Are there any other uh, questions that people are dying to ask? I just found out about the non-universality of Clifford Gates um, myself last week, so oh, it was it was well timed. Well timed for me. <laughs> and you've been a, in a hole of depression since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think there are a lot of motivation to like realize a non-grief for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This may um, be the first actual application of non-invertible symmetry. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, actual is a stretch, yeah. but like uh, it sounds like a place where like you really need it. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I feel I want to explore more about the like application of the knowing what was symmetry in the context of the uh like error correction. Maybe like so far I've just consider like each P form symmetry is uh invertible, but uh, like if you consider knowing what was symmetry, like for for example, like um. Yeah, for example, some projective measurement of the some condensation operator. But like, this kind of stuff is an uh, like example of the non invertible symmetry of TKFT. So, yeah, it might be like maybe chat with the quantum information series and they develop some like role of the non invertible symmetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there like a like measurement feed forward type protocols for making these um, these non invertible symmetries? Ah, uh, so you mean like a like a Kramaswani duality in your paper? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that would be great. Like, uh, for example, I be, I think like no one has done the three plus one dimensional Kramaswani duality in that setup, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, yeah, mostly people have done like two D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think like a similar thing can be done for the like three plus one D, maybe like just uh doing the gauging procedure over one whole symmetry by measurement. I think for Kramer's yeah. runner it's straightforward, but like make it do yeah. P plus IP action would be pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so far, yeah, it'd be great if you can do P plus IP, but uh, I don't know how to do that. Like so far, yeah, like yeah, we I have to create some like some nasty unitary like which nucleus of P plus IP and P minus IP and then sweep it. Um mm. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not a like explicitly written in terms of the unitary circuit. So like I think it's still uh, satisfying for the quantum inference theories. Um 
yeah like this thing is like a sequential circuit yeah like it's well like uh so far the status is that uh, like the unitary like Fidowski Hastings written down is a uh, um some like finite time evolution by a Hamiltonian. So like mm. basically like we can like, so this unitary can be deformed at the level of the free fermion. So so basically we start mm. with a of the like atomic insurgents and then like kind of deform the free fermion Hamiltonian by uh, some yeah mm -hmm. on like finite time evolution and then like yeah, this can be um because there's some like quasi local Hamiltonian evolution. Um, yeah, I see. Is, so it is sort of finite depth still. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like uh, hopefully it's just uh like because this is a quasi local Hamiltonian by uh, exponential decay entails. So like uh, hopefully it can be like written in terms of the circuit, but uh, like uh, I, I yeah, no one has explicitly done that. Yeah. Well, I guess it would be. Probably the circuit elements need tails or something. Well, but the uh, yeah, like in this setup, like I has a actually has a tail, but uh, I hopefully like it can be um, realized by the exact circuit because, like for example, I think that um, so this um, so this circuit can be also realized by in the setup of Z two times Z two guess theory, mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, we can also consider this logical gates by uh, some like p plus ip times p minus ip like uh, which is just spt um so like yeah if we consider z2 times z2 gates theory like uh by we can consider some uh spt operator like a sound like zero mm -hmm. point generated by like some z2 spt phase classified by z8 uh, mm -hmm. the and the, the yeah, this well, this SPT phase has a sound exactly throwable model. And the like the disentangler for this should be for the pair of the people, like this SPT can be written in terms of the uh exactly like local circuit, I believe. So in that sense, I think there is a way to express this in terms of the like fully local uh, circuit, the AIV. Yeah, like a uh, benefit the uh, community of quantum information, I think. Yeah. I see. Cool. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, could I maybe ask like one very naive question and one actual question? <laughs> sure, sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So the very naive question is I'm I'm still trying to kind of understand where the, where this p plus ip order came from um, in the first place like how, how do you know it's there uh, is it just that you can write down a, like e to the i ada or something into a partition function like that's is that the only reason or well like uh well like uh at least i know that, that there is a symmetry defect uh defined by evaluating an invertible tkft on the invertible phase on the like some co-dimension one locus, uh, co-dimension something locus. So yeah, in that case, in, yeah. So like we can explicitly like express the uh, like insertion of the uh, some turning on background gauge field at the level of the Lagrangians. So like we can just write uh, some some town, which is like C1 cup, some A cup gravitational chance ions. Um, so yeah. So, well, wait, sorry. Um, you, right, you said that you expect a yeah, sorry, I don't really understand. So, sorry, from the form of the <clears throat> of the topological action, I know that you can just write down excitations where it's just integral of a integral of b and you know stuff like that or some lines right um and by the okay so where does the p plus ip come from uh so it, it's more like a condensation operator right like uh like a it's it's somewhat like uh, some 
yeah, some electric operator for um that consists of the electric. Product. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, for example, Kitab chain operator is explicitly like ah, a, yes, it has yes. a conversation defect. Um, like a, it's a it's a basically a shoe hand like a shoe hand like like Constantinos like Sahan paper like a condensation defect. So you would say that it's it, it's like the treasure stream. Uh well like uh, when I say treasure like I like I want to mean uh, some non invertible operator which condenses yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. particle. But uh, here like like this is a condensation operator, but it is invertible. Um, it is invertible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, in Shoe Hands paper, like there is a like this explicit description of the like this Kitab chain operator in terms of the like condensation of the ferromagnetic particle on the mm -hmm. on, on surface. Oh no, yeah, yeah, no. Like in um in Theo's work, <clears throat> in the fermionic case where you have like the center of sigma s vector, right? That's the two categorical description. Like the Trister string, there is a vertical. So I think I think this oh. might just that. So like here, Cheshire means a Kitab chain operator. Uh, you mean? Yeah, like the P plus IP phase might just be the the more volume attached to this uh, fermionic Cheshire. Well, yeah, for, yeah, uh, well, like the you have a, right. Yeah. You have a dynamical spin structure, right? So it's like a fermionic torque code, so to speak. Right, right. This is just the dynamical spin structure, so we we can define that. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the second question, which is related to this, now I got a no. Now I have a better idea. Um, can I see this three group that you wrote down? Can I see this just, for example, if I were to compute um, the likes monoidal automorphisms of the two category that describe my gap fields? Let's say do that. Just do math. You know. Can I see uh, this three group come up? Oh, sorry, can, can you say again? Like I, I see. So let's say, yeah. So let's say I don't know how to do physics. <laughs> so I just um, I I know the <clears throat> braided two category that describe my phase. Mm -hmm. And let's say I just compute the lax monoidal automorphisms of this two category, which is like the levels match up. It's a three group. <clears throat> so would that be the same as do do you expect this three group to be the same as the one you've written down? Well, yeah, like to be honest, I yeah, I don't have much knowledge about the some higher category language, but uh well, like uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, hopefully like yeah, like so far like I haven't examined the like yeah, like knowing what full structure of knowing what it was symmetry. Uh yeah, like involving the full like Z8 symmetry, but uh, like, but uh, if you restrict myself, if I restrict myself to the like invertible symmetry, like it is tolerable for me because like uh, basically the algebraic structure can be like understood in terms of the some relations among the uh like background issues. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, that's it's also a very nice perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, right. So basically, you, like you're interested in like, maybe de describing this in terms of the language of the higher category, or yeah, yeah, like it's just um... yeah, I guess it's just like a like a like a way in which I can wrap my head around because I'm used to like reading stuff written by Theo <laughs> where um, everything is very. Uh, Like it's just describing like mathematical objects without giving uh, physics uh, meaning much of physics meaning to it. So, but yeah, like that. That I think that would be an interesting question. I see. I see. Think about. I see. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to uh, stop the recording here.